I wanna know what love is. I want you to show me. Da -da. I wanna know what love is. I want you to show me. I watched a tutorial that said always warm up your voice before doing voiceover, so I hope you enjoyed. Today was a rather unremarkable day here in Oslo, but it matters not, I just wanted to do some coding and take you guys along the way. More importantly, I just want to take it easy today, I'm so tired of the overproduction and AI generated content that I want to take it in the opposite direction. Like this video is not even color graded, there's no music, there's barely any sound editing, it's just life as it is. So I hope you guys like that. So, what am I working on? I've been working on this book about software engineering for about four months now, and I'm still improving some of the pages. I've been really blown away by how many of you sent me really encouraging and positive feedback about the book, so I wanted to improve it even more. Here I have the book running on localhost, and specifically today I want to focus on the page about the builder pattern. I feel like the builder pattern is often very misunderstood, so I tried to provide real-world examples. However, what this page is missing is some kind of an interactive illustration to help you memorize the concepts on the page more easily, something like I have on the other pages in the book. I'm coding all of these illustrations completely from scratch using JavaScript and SVG, and as I'm setting up a new file here, this video is sponsored by Miro. So let's use that to quickly sketch out what I'm going to build, and I'm gonna try and explain the builder pattern as well for those of you who don't know. Alright, so the proverbial example that I always like to use for a builder pattern is a car configurator. And please excuse my poor drawing skills here, but I just want to illustrate what I mean. So you know how on pretty much every manufacturer's website you can configure your dream car. So let's say you can choose the color, you can choose the size of the wheels, you can choose the trim levels and so on. And this website allows you to do it for free and you can do it over and over again and you can even save your configurations for later and come back to them and share them with your friends and so on. So in this example, the car configurator website is the builder pattern because the builder is an object that is very cheap to create, easy to manage and safe to discard. And it simply represents the configuration of whatever you want to produce. Later, as a distinction to that, when you actually want to produce that vehicle in a factory, let's say that this is a car factory, that process is very expensive. So you want to delay that process as much as you can. And also you want to ensure that whatever configuration you pass to the factory is completely valid and producible because some manufacturers have random restrictions. For example, if you choose a trim level that is not the top trim level, you cannot choose a certain type of wheels and so on. So the builder is the one doing all of that validation, whereas the factory is the one doing all of the production. And the production is very expensive, whereas the builder is very cheap to have. Now, Miro also has this really cool feature that you can use to draw a diagram using a prompt. So to make up for my poor drawing skills, I'm going to create a chart of the builder pattern focusing on this configuration versus production. So here you can see when you start building your object, you can configure it as much as you like by setting parameters and the builder will validate your configuration, optionally produce errors if it's not valid. But finally, if the configuration is fully spec'd out and it is valid, it will allow you to produce the object and it will give you the final car in this case or whatever is necessary to produce. So again, I just want to drive home the point that the builder is very cheap to produce, you can have as many of them as you like, and it allows you to configure producing a resource that is usually very expensive to produce, such as a car, or maybe in programming it can be a database connection which requires open ports and so on, and in the book I give a few more examples as well. So, check out Miro guys, the AI features are really cool, they save a lot of time, especially if you're creating something fiddly like a sequence diagram with lots of lines and boxes and shapes, or maybe you're exploring a complex algorithm, nobody has the time to put all of those elements by hand on the canvas. This way you can get started really quickly, get something on the page immediately, and then later if you have time you can improve it, but in my experience it gives pretty good results out of the box as well.
So here for the book I started working on a little car configurator illustration, but because I'm using cursor, the AI editor, I noticed that when I'm just starting out a new file, it makes these wild predictions about what I want to make and it becomes a little bit frustrating. But then as I go and as I add more and more to the file, it starts understanding better what I'm trying to do and then the suggestions are slowly improving. But in any case, I had lots of fun writing these little functions to generate the paths for the wheels and draw them in SVG using some basic trigonometry and some maths. Surprisingly, Cursor wasn't able to help me with this, but it did some other things well, so it's still kind of worth it for me. Now, while working on this book, I also stumbled upon a really cool open source project, which is a little editor for editing SVG paths in the browser. And I found it useful on more than one occasion, but here I recorded how I was able to create the bodywork of the car. It's hosted on GitHub pages, and I'll include a link in the description for you guys, so check it out. A bit of a fun fact, I made my own little animation framework and almost like a little game engine for all of these illustrations. There is a way to get the book with its source code, so I put a link in the description if you're interested. But in short, it's a simple class that allows you to compute how a value changes over time with an easing function. And with a few helpers to create sequential and parallel animations, I was really able to create some pretty complex stuff that might look hard from the outside. But for now, I'm just really excited that I had the wheels working and I created two different variations, the off-road wheels and regular wheels. But I had one more kind of funny idea to finish it off. And maybe I should tone down the amplitude a little bit for the off-road wheels, but for now, honestly, I'm just really happy with how it turned out. So thanks for watching, check out Miro and all the links in the description guys, and I'll see you in the next one.